Arts Westchester Virtual Art Workshops. Today we are going to learn how to create a landscape drawing. My name is Terry Kessler Schwartz and I have been a teaching artist on Arts Westchester's artist roster for many years. I would like to show you some supplies that you will need for today. And the first thing are pencils. Graphite pencils, number two pencils, which I'm sure you have from school. And I have three here because I really like to keep the points very sharp. It's important when you draw not to have dull points or you don't get fine lines. The other thing that I like to use, because we'll be doing some smudging or shading, um, there are three options. This is a pencil with a Kleenex wrapped around it and taped with a little bit of masking tape or scotch tape if you have it. If you don't have an, an extra pencil, a Q-tip is wonderful to have. The more advanced and a lot of fun to use, it's called a tortillon tool and it comes in various sizes. You can see this is bigger than this. And it's, it's also made out of paper, rolled up paper, and it has points on either end. And this is wonderful for smudging. The other thing is an eraser, because sometimes you would like to erase a line. I don't do it that often. I use it more to erase shading. If I get something too dark, it lifts off the pencil or graphite, it's called. So the different erasers, this is a white plastic one, a pink eraser, just a gum eraser. And then this is something called a kneaded eraser, which you can pull apart. And I'll show you later how we can use it, but it's very useful to take off the pencil lines. So how do we get started? If we're not drawing outside, if it's a rainy day or you don't have access to the outside, what I'd like to do is go out and take a photograph with my, with my phone. If you don't have a printer at home, you can use your phone and draw from the image on your phone, but I'm, I'm using a print that I printed out on my printer. And what I like to do is to think about the composition. Well, the tree is on the side, we know that. Where is the horizon line? And what is the horizon line? The horizon line is where the land meets the sky, or it could be where the land meets the water. In this case, it's the land here, and the sky is hidden, I noticed that, but this is where the sky would be if all these different trees weren't in the background. So I like to use this, this is called the rule of thirds. And if you have ever done any editing on your phone, you will see that there's a grid and it is divided up into thirds going vertically and this way horizontally. So the center of interest or where you would like the onlooker to look first at your drawing is really here on this side, if we're using this photograph, right? It's on the side. So you would use this as your rule of third. Use this as your rule of third. The horizon line would be this line right here. So I really like to break up my drawing using this kind of grid. Now you don't have to have the grid drawn on your drawing paper, but you can keep this as a reference and just when you're looking at your photograph or the image on the phone, keep this in mind. Now you might wanna do a vertical drawing. I'm doing a horizontal drawing today, but if you're doing a vertical drawing, it would be the same concept. The image would be this way and the point of interest might be on this side or this side. I very rarely like to have the point of interest right in the center. It's just more interesting to have it on the sides. So the first thing I like to do when I start with the drawing, I'm gonna have my drawing paper on something 
I'm putting it on a pad of paper so it has some cushioning. And then I like to use a piece of paper underneath my hand because drawing with pencils is very messy. And you don't wanna to have too many extra smudges. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is called a contour line drawing. What is a contour line drawing? Basically, it is just drawing an outline of the shapes, of the positive shapes that you see. I have already started the contour line drawing, so I'm just gonna go over some of these lines to show you, but it's really just the outside edges of the object, and the main object here is the tree. And I, I put the grid right in, on top of the drawing here, so above the drawing, so that you can see that part of the tree here, if I put, put a ruler next to it, you can see that that's one third. So that's sort of how you can judge on your paper that it's one third. And then this one here is the second, it's the middle of the drawing. So you can just bring the ruler down and see that this is the second part. And then this is the third part over here. So it just, it's a, a little visual aid having this grid so you can judge where to start your drawing. So I, I'm starting from the right side and I'm drawing the limbs of the tree and the trunk. I'm just putting in the shapes where I see the shadows. That's another shape here. The horizon line goes across, so I'm gonna put that in. And then the land is here, some dirt <laughs> land, vertical lines here for some shrubs, but the main thing are the branches. And I'm just holding my pencil like you would write in school. And I like to go up to the top with the branches because the tree keeps on going. It doesn't just stop in midair. So make sure it goes out off the edges of your paper. Okay. And this is the azalea bush over here. And there are some, I'm gonna make these leaves a little bit larger. These are rhododendron leaves, I think. Okay. Just so you get, can get an idea of where the placement is of everything. Now, the shape that's here this shape here of the tree, if you can follow what I'm doing with the pencil just to show you that what shape it is. This is a positive shape in between this big shape here where the sky is here and leaves, that is called a negative shape. And if you look at that shape, you can kind of make the same shape here on your paper. You see, so looking at negative shapes in between, here's another big negative shape in between. So we can see this is the big negative shape. This whole shape here, this whole shape here that I'm outlining is another negative shape. And it just gives you an idea of the distance between the limbs. It's a little tool that artists use, positive and negative, it's called. Okay, so I think we're ready to start our shading. Um, I'm gonna use another pencil because as I said before, it's really good to have sharp points. So I'm gonna start the shading, but I'm gonna hold my pencil on its side and I'm gonna look for the darker areas. So I'm gonna start right here because it's, it's pretty dark and you can squint with one eye, just squint and look through with your, with your eye that's not squinted to see what are the darkest areas. And I think it's all these very dark shaded areas on the limbs. It's darker than anything else. So I'm using the pencil on its side looking for where the shadows are.
Okay, I'm gonna use the tortillon and I'm gonna use the Q-tip. So you can see, here's the Q-tip, which works pretty nicely. And also the Kleenex wrapped around the pencil. Now, the tortillon is good only because it can get into, you can use it like this, like instead of on its side, you can use it like a pencil. And it just gets into the little areas a little bit better. But the Q-tip works absolutely fine too, and the Kleenex. So whatever you have on hand, but you see how smooth it's getting. It, it just blends it beautifully. And it makes it look three-dimensional, like it's really an object coming out at you. Okay, so now there's shading here, which I didn't do. So I'm gonna do that a little bit. But I see that there's some, it looks like Pachysandra, some kind of plant. So how do I get that? We need to do a little texture. So I'm holding the pencil on its side and I'm going just in a circular motion here. So it looks like little, little leaves, a little texture. Now what about the bark of the tree? If you do take pictures outside, you could take a picture of the tree like I have, and then maybe take a close-up shot of the bark if you're doing a tree, so that you can actually see more clearly what it looks like. So I see that there are some lines. I don't have a close-up right here, but I can see that there are some lines. So maybe you wanna use the pencil again like you were doing letters in school up like this. And I'm using this over the shaded areas just to give it a little bit of texture. Okay, now what about over here? There are some leaves that are quite dark, these little leaves. I'm making them a little bit bigger just to give some more interest. Now that's a good thing when you're an artist, you can improvise a bit. So as I said, I'm making it a little bit bigger than what's in the photo. All on its side. And this is an azalea bush and it's also got tiny little flowers. So I'm not gonna draw each flower individually. I am going to draw just going around in, in circles like this. And there's some darks here where the branches are. And then I'm going to shade it. To make it smoother. And this needs to be darker down here. Now, what do we do here? We can just use the tortillon or the Q-tip, and you don't even have to do pencil lines. I'm trying to get the shading that's here. You can just do this. Sometimes I even put a little bit of pencil right on this, and it gets darker. I'm going to I'm going to use the pencil on its side a little bit. Now I'm going to leave some areas open because there's sky. And it's very it looks very congested with all these leaves. So maybe I'm just going to leave a little bit more than what the photo has so you can see the sky. So I'm going around in circles so that I can get that effect of the leaves. Now it's a little bit dark here, so I'm going to add a little bit of shading. 
on its side and I see that there's looks like there's another tree coming out there in the background here's some kind of bush shrubbery here and there's dark here so I'm going to try to get some darks in there Now this is very light here. So remember what I talked about using the eraser to lift off. This looks very light here and I did it a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna lift off, lift off. And maybe I wanna do some highlights on the tree. So using the eraser is very useful. Oh, I see that there's highlights here, which I don't have. So I'm gonna put them in and maybe a little bit more on the tree. So it's very useful. The other thing you can do, if you want to even get it darker, is to do something called cross hatching with the pencil. It's where you do lines that are very close together one way, and then you start in the opposite direction. You can do it like that, or like this. And you just keep on going up and down and across. It's called cross hatching. So if you want to do it like that, you can do that. It gives it some extra texture. So if you like this workshop, go to artsw.org. And thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you have fun drawing.